hello and welcome to the channel in today's video we are going to be talking about materiality in auditing okay so i'm going to make this video as simple as possible so you understand what materiality is and how we use it in auditing materiality is a very important concept in auditing right there's no audit we perform without having to deal with materiality so we're going to be looking at materiality through the use of a practical example. So let's get into the video. We're going to use um, an illustrative audit client and the name of our client is going to be called Day Force Manufacturing. So the video is going to be in two parts, right? So the first part of this video, I'm going to introduce you to the client background and then I'm going to um, teach you what materiality is from a theoretical perspective and in the next video we are going to see how we are going to set our materiality using this client okay so let's look at the background of the client um day force manufacturing is a privately owned company okay please put this information at the back of your mind because when we get to the point where we have to set our materiality we need this information okay it is a privately owned company, not a publicly owned company, okay, that manufactures high quality men's clothing. And it has been in operation for seven years. It has 10 locations across Canada. And the company is owned by two people and they both own 25% respectively in the company, okay. And the other 50% is held by unrelated private investors. Please make sure you keep this information at the back of your mind because we need this information when setting our materiality. So Dayforce um, has a $110 million of bank loan and it has some bank covenants attached to the loans. And who are the financial statement users? Okay, this is very important information. They include the bank, the management, private investors and tax authority. So now that we know the client um, background information, let's get um, further into it. So now we need to determine the levels of materiality. So when we talk about materiality, okay, as someone um, who works in an audit firm, we always have um, levels of materiality. So the first one we have is what we call the overall materiality. So if you've ever worked in an audit firm or you ever studied um, auditing, you would have heard about overall materiality. So this is the materiality for the financial statement as a whole. And remember, we're going to look at this from a practical perspective using the force manufacturing. Okay, this is just the theoretical aspect. And aside from that, we have the performance materiality. And what do we do with this? We use this when assessing risk and planning procedure. Okay. So we have the overall materiality and then we have the performance materiality. We are going to look at this from a practical point. So um, this is a diagram right here. Our overall materiality is for the financial statement as a whole. Okay. While the performance materiality is used when we are assessing risk and planning procedures. Okay. So maybe when we are doing planning procedures for property, plant and equipment or for um, intangibles or for revenue okay so that is when we apply the performance materiality and also we have something we call clearly trivia what do we mean by clearly trivia so this is um for amounts that we consider to be inconsequ inconsequential okay and we normally set this at about five percent of the overall materiality okay so um i'm going to show you how we apply this when auditing okay so the clearly trivia is usually set at five percent so when you're performing your audit for instance i can show you an example right here so this is our payroll uh, working paper so as you may will perform our testing in payroll and then we discover that there is an error look at the error the error is just one dollar okay so the error is coming from here. So we, the error is coming from the variance right here. So when we did our testing, we had a total variance of $1. What are we going to do with it? This amount is very inconsequential, okay? So we are going to say this amount is trivial. It is clearly trivial. There's nothing we can do about this. This is not going to affect 
um, the decision of any investor of or of any bank or any um, creditor so we're going to assume this amount is clearly what trivia okay so that is what we mean when we say clearly trivia so let's go back to our video um, so um, that is what we mean by clearly trivial and we normally say that at five percent of the overall materiality so those are the levels of materiality we have the overall materiality we have the performance materiality and we have what we call clearly trivial or inconsequential amount so how do we determine our materiality so it says we start with the consideration of the user's needs so remember when I was um, reading the client's background, I told you to put the information at the back of your mind because we need it when we are going to determine our materiality. So you have to determine what are the user's expectations, okay? So this is what we do in accounting firm. Whenever we are auditing a client, we start by looking who are the financial statement users, what are their expectations, okay? So materiality is not a one-size-fits-all approach. You don't apply the same materiality to all your clients okay you apply the materiality based on the um, particular situation of that company who are the users what are their expectations okay what are the main er areas of the financial statement that users will focus on okay and also the type of organization also plays a role in determining the materiality so can you see that it is not a one size fit all approach okay you have to apply your judgment when setting materiality and also um, the type of company also determines what materiality we are going to set for that particular client so is it a profit oriented company if it's private or is it um, a public oriented uh, sorry a profit oriented public company or is it a not for profit so these are different factors that we have to consider when setting our materiality because these are going to affect the materiality for each client okay and when we were reading our case study we saw that day force is a privately owned company okay so when we get to the point of setting the materiality we are going to see how this will affect the materiality and um, so based on users needs and the nature of the company as seen above we consider possible benchmarks and select the one that is most appropriate okay so when you consider the users needs, you have to select the benchmark so what are the common benchmarks that we use when setting materiality so the common benchmarks are gross revenue, gross expenses, total assets, total equity, okay? So these are some of the, the list is not exhaustive, but these are the common benchmarks we use when setting materiality. So um, the auditor will determine based on judgment which of these benchmark to use, okay? Like I said, it is not a one size fits or you have to determine you know each client's case is going to be specific it's going to be different so what are the um, benchmark percentage so assuming you already decide on the benchmark to use if you say okay I'm going to be using revenue as the benchmark what is the percentage you're going to apply to revenue okay so it says once we have selected the benchmark which can be revenue or expenses or assets we must apply an appropriate benchmark an appropriate percentage to the benchmark okay and as you know if you're studying for auditing or if you're working in an auditing firm um, there are always standard um, guidelines to use for your percentage okay so I'm going to be showing you the one that is applicable in most um, Canadian companies so it says auditors should always apply or use the lower end of the range okay so when you're auditing public companies you always want to use the lower end of the range okay so um just put that in mind for public companies if it says five to ten you have to use five for public companies if it says two to four percent you have to use two so for public companies you always want to use the lower end of the range okay so let's look at some of the 
percentage range for Canadian entities. So depending on wherever you are, there are um, different guidelines that um, may be applicable to your own um, particular country. Okay. So for profit oriented company, the benchmark are usually um, pre tax profit, gross revenue. So you're not going to use all of this. Okay. So for day force, when we are going to look at um, the practical example, we are going to select one of these and we are going to select it based on what judgment. Okay. It's going to be based on judgment. So we can either decide to use the total asset or the gross revenue. Okay. So for profit company, for profit oriented company, these are the suggested benchmark. Okay. You can either use any of these. And these are the percentage range. So if you're going to be using gross revenue, you can use within two to four percent of gross revenue as your materiality. Okay, but remember for public companies, you have to use the lower end of the range. Okay, and let's look at for mining companies. So assuming our audit client is in the mining industry, what is the suggested benchmark? So the suggested benchmark is total assets total equity and exploration um, expenses okay so why don't we have revenue here because most mining companies don't have revenue most times they incur a um, lot of expenses relating to um, exploration um, expenses okay so that is why you see there is no revenue suggested here so and look at the range. These are the range you can use. So assuming they force was a mining company, we can decide to use E and E expenditure as our benchmark, and then we can use within two to four percent to set our materiality. Okay. So what about um not for profit organization? The suggested benchmark is gross revenue and gross expenses. Okay. Uh, and these are the range that can be applied to the benchmark. So this is just, um, you know, this is just the important thing about materiality. What you need to know is what are the levels of materiality. You have your overall materiality and your performance materiality. And from there, you set clearly trivia, which is the inconsequential amount. And from there, you have to determine what benchmark are you going to apply? Are you going to apply gross revenue? Or total assets and that would um, depend on the industry right where the client is and then you apply the percentage based on the guideline you are using so that is what I'm going to be doing in this first video and in the next video we're going to look into day force and see how we can set materiality for day force okay so we are going to agree together on what benchmark to use and what percentage to use and we'll see how we can um, help our clients to set the materiality okay so that will be it for this video i'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to look um, at the practical example of day force thank you very much for watching the video today if you have any question please put that in the comment section and like and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching and bye